lady in the trap, yeah, the ladies get in the trap with their fellas and they hold them down and she wanted them, you know what I mean? She wanted the girls gonna hold you down. You smell me? You feel that, don't you? Feel that, don't you? What's good, guys? Village Village is with me in the trap, in the building, dotted around different states of America. Is everyone good? Everyone happy? Everyone great? Yes. 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 All those yeah. things. Man, I mean, we have to get into it because... Well, hang on. Let, let's, let's, let's say who's in the room. We've got Earth Gang in the building. We've got Woo. Benji. Woo. And Mariva. <laughs> love it man look you guys have just put out a picasso of an album um it's definitely i mean you, even the artwork in itself is it's an art piece man you, you guys really put your all into it and i really really want to get into the crux of it because i feel like there's so much uh, messaging you guys almost represent like soldiers coming together because you're like serving the community you're you're fighting the good fight and it appears in this album more than ever that the foundations of the squad, what you guys are actually built on, is embodied in African spirituality. I know Olu, you put that out on display a lot. Mariba, Mariba you're Ethiopian. You know, this is Africa really at the core of this project. And one could make the observation that even the name in itself, right? Spillage Village, the latter half, it might come from the proverb, and I want to ask you guys about this. Um, it takes a village to, to raise a child. That's an African proverb. So, man, you you, you done, done more research than most of these yep. people who interviewed us. You know what you're there talking you about. That wasn't even research. That was me being... You know. common sense. Uh, you know, that what I'm saying. <laughs> no, nah, you did this life research. That's funny. You just know. You just did this life you know. What can you elaborate, actually, on that proverb? It takes a village to raise a child. Who wants to elaborate on that? I don't say it takes a, a a village or a community or just a group of like-minded people to 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 let something, anything, whether it's a child, whether it's an idea, whether it's a dream, but to bring it into this into full fruition. You know what I'm saying? Like to actually have it actualized and be manifested in this physical space that we are. So I mean, it takes more than one person. You really can't do nothing alone. So that's really you know the embodiment of this project and the embodiment of what we represent. Mariba, you might be able to expand on this seeing as you spent some time back in Ethiopia. What is the difference between the Ethiopian experience and the American experience for you? Mm. I mean, I always say that being Ethiopia, it's very family oriented. And I saw so many connections between like the black American experience and being back there. It definitely was like, oh, this is why we call each other brother and sister this is why it's natural to us to treat each other like family when we get close to one another like it's just deeply rooted in us and nothing matters more in Ethiopia than your family like nothing and the people around you your neighbors like you all take care of each other you know what I'm saying people like to focus on what people there don't have but that's really not what people are focused on when you go there you know you're focused on what you do have and then also how you can contribute with the whole so that's something I definitely carry with me yeah, so contrary to what we might see in the media and the message that's put across in the media, you probably felt like going there almost lifted the oppression from you yes. just being around. <laughs> Absolutely. Your... Yeah. I want every I want every black person around the world to be able to take a free trip to their country of choosing Africa. Gotta go. You just gotta go. You gotta see like you gotta, go. you gotta put those pieces together about yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I can't figure out where my family's from. Say, say that again. Uh, I can figure out where my family's from. That's where it's yeah. right now. I mean, my parents. Okay. Yeah, I'm, about to get my, I'm about to get my zone in the last few weeks. African yep. ancestry, about to, about to let your boy know, about to flip me down. Yeah. How do you go about actually really f figuring out where you're from? Because I know there's like websites, there's services. What is the trusted? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of two ways. One, you could do it by like research, um, which is super long and super difficult. You know what I'm saying? Like just research where your people are from. My mama does that a lot. You know what I'm saying? Just um, just slave records or where people were sold to who or what family, who changed, when was their last name changed and just looking at ledgers and stuff and going back from this ship was taken from this country. But I mean, honestly, the best way to do it is through DNA. So I've done it with African ancestry which is different from like Ancestry.com and, and like things like that because 
it traces your your mother's 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 side, your father's 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 side to a specific area where they originated from, rather than saying you have a percentage from here, twenty five percent from here, thirty percent from there. Like it just traces like the I'm not I don't really know the scientific terms, but it goes all the way back to your mom. That's so cool. All the way back to your dad. Yeah, I want to do but that. As a, I want, yeah. As a man, I'm about to say, as a man, you could do both. But if you're a woman, then you have to have like your brother or like you know, like a a, a male relative in order to do your father's side. I want to get into the listening experience of spillage, and I hope I said that right. Religion, it's like religion, religion. but still spillage. Okay, so okay, I'm happy that you guys almost anticipated this question. You said it's like religion. So when you add the I O N right at the end of a word, you're either making the word an action or a condition. Which ones? Which one were you guys going for? Sp- spillage and the action, or spillage and the condition? Damn, that's a the action that's to a live question. in a certain condition. Woo! Hang wow, on what, a an <laughs> what an answer! What an answer! Rewind. Yeah, we 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 want to inspire people to take action to live in a in a new way of life, in a new condition, a peaceful condition, an elevated state. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that everything gonna be perfect or that you're gonna be an angel, you know what I'm saying, but at least that you're striving for it at all times, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just a different type of lifestyle. It's it's a it's it's freeing, you know what I'm saying? You you take a lot of weight off when you allow yourself to live in that space. That's amazing. And I, I really got that from, I mean, this is not a one, one time listen project. Definitely is something for the fans to really digest, but you guys have been putting this messaging um, in your music for a long time now. I mean, Earth Gang, we spoke last year, I think it was on spirituality and religious practices. This was when you dropped church, right? Um, but this one, of course, in this project, you guys are referencing texts and, and biblical sc- scriptures, literally from, from top to bottom. Do you feel like this energy um, from your fans that your mission as a modern day collective of preachers is being fulfilled? You're like a collective of preachers. Do you think it's, this messaging is being fulfilled to your fans? Um, I, I feel like it will, if you understand. I'm a, I'm a preacher's kid. So both of my parents are preachers. Um, so I've, I've grown up with this um, for a long time. And like one of the central understandings that I get just out of our religion period and one of the things i believe in is that you know if two it says if two or three are gathered you know together and under the same pretense you know that's church in and of itself so like with us we had eight people nine people you know gathered together under the same you know one common goal and with the same understanding you know and i think that message is, is going to be well received just in that regard um you know because it doesn't Take, you don't have to go to church to receive a message. Like you don't have to actually go to a physical building. You just have to be around people who are like-minded and have a conversation and a dialogue. And I think we're going to spark. I mean, the cover by itself already sparked a crazy dialogue. Um, and like with the the tracks and of itself too. Like you know, I think a conversation is all we're really trying to to have first with with our fans, and then you know, ultimately move forward and try to change the world. I saw a lot of people on Twitter who were talking about like how demonic the album was now i'm needing to come out yet just yeah. based off like the cover alone and i was just like yo how if you understand like us as individual artists and who spillage village has always been like um um and just people you know basically expressing their own views of religion already without having to like without having listened to the album yet you know what i mean like it was kind of like it was kind of annoying Realistic, but this is really annoying. I, I was about to say that kind of how I'm glad we even put like the religious terms in the track listen because, yeah, that's how a lot of people view something that's different than what they practice or what they believe. If it's a different ideology, ideology, they always view it as negative, like off the bat without even understanding, you know what I'm saying? No matter if it's Christian, Islam, Hinduism, whatever, if it's it may, not even religion, but if it's just a different way of life, people are always make it negative, and it's like, nah, we. We actually want to challenge these ideas and bring yeah. out the goodness and all of these things, you know what I'm saying, to put it under one umbrella. I like that. And probably a polarizing figure in this same subject matter is someone like Kanye West. And we, we're not going to talk about Kanye because that would take forever. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but we did mention, um, going back to our last conversation, Earth Gang, um, we did mention the Sunday service at the time it was becoming viral. And you were very certain about it being authentic rather than just being a, a spectacle. Uh, and one thing that, that Kanye tweeted recently, among the many, uh, that really resonated me, with me, and I think it holds truth to the messaging of this album, he says, fuck all this dick swinging content. We all gonna be dead in a hundred years. Let the kids have the music. Do you feel like this is kind of a sentiment? Because in Baptize, you mentioned things like, I'm giving out jobs, sketching out plans. I'm getting money, the kids getting money. So it's almost like a pass it down to the next generation kind of lessons you're giving. Would you say that's a sentiment? Yes, 100%, absolutely. 100%. 100%. Yes. That's a pay forward. That's the mission. Right. So what, I mean, what kind of conversations have you had with the younger generation that has, has sparked certain, certain things in you to, to talk about, to make sure that you are teaching? I feel like the, the funniest thing to me is how confused they are at why we live in, in the state that, that we live in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like a kid, a child will tell you if something don't make sense to them like that. You know what I'm saying? So like kids that are like 13, 14, 15, they be like, man, what is y'all doing, man? Like why, like, why is it not working? What is the issue? Like, why is it so hard? Why is living together so difficult? You know? And I feel like because they look at it that way, it's like, this is such an easy problem to solve. Then I feel like all we got to do is put them, get them the tools and then we'll be fine. Yeah. In regards to the tools then, because some people might say social media should have been a tool or should be used like a tool, but it's almost... In some ways it is. Okay, tell me more. Doc. It's I a double-edged like sword, just like, any, just like any great technology. You know what I'm saying? The, in, in, in a lot of ways, the automobile is supposed to just be a tool, but you know what I'm saying? We've seen it work both ways. <laughs> like any, any great advancement in technology, you're going to get both ends of it. It's just what we, as a, as a society, is willing to do with the this side. To, to take us to, you know what I'm saying, the, the next side, take us to the safer side. You hit that spot on, it's true, because even just a simple thing like a kitchen knife, you know, it's a survival tool. It, it originated from being a survival tool, but, you know, it turned into being a weapon. So, yeah, that's true. And we got it, and we got to, as a people, decide on, on the tool aspect being more yeah. prevalent. For sure. I know you guys tap into more things like teachings and books and podcasts is not just coming from the Bible. So can you give us some, some suggestions of stuff that, you know, us and the younger generation should be really looking into for teachings? Yeah. You should read the daily stoic. Um, I forgot what my man name is who, who wrote it, but you should read the daily stoic. It's really fire. It has like daily things and daily affirmations and stuff to like, not, not even affirmations, but just it's like every day is a certain topic on how to like declutter your life or live in a certain way to where anything outside of your control would not bother your state. You know, you know what I'm saying? And you like, it's, it's really dope. Um, I would say that the 48 laws of power, because it, it teaches you how to interact with people and like, you know what I'm saying? Get what you want, but also understand that you got to let other people get what they want too, just for the reciprocity to go on. So, Benji, I feel like you had something there. I Yeah, I'd say just about anything that just tells it straight. One of my favorite bars in uh, the album is Doc's verse in Baptized. He said, I'm over my lyrical phase. I'd rather be potent. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, I've been reading books that just tell, tell it like straight up, you know, like I, there's no need for me to, there's no really need, real need for anyone to have to like, you know, go through hoops and, and leaps and bounds for simple information that we can pass down. Like, this is wrong. This is right. The wise sometimes don't really have to be, you know, um, developed so soon. But like, if you can just, if you can read texts or anything that just tell it to you straight up, you know, I think people would be a lot better off. And especially for like this album, like there's no you know, like tiptoeing around like the, the bush or whatever, like it's just straight, you know, this is, it is what it is. Cause that's how life is right now. Um, yeah. So anything I'd say like that, like that could be, you know, just straight up factual. I feel you. Mariba, what about yourself from a woman's perspective? Yeah. And a black woman. Um, so I, I read a lot of fiction and 
I don't know if that's good or bad. And like, I just feel very, a very imaginative person. And my imagination keeps me creative, hopeful, excited about life. Um, but I have been reading this book. I had to go grab it. It's called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Because I realized recently that like, I'm a big, big ass kid and I really need to get some of my stuff together. So I'm like, okay, how can I become more like, keep that kind of childlike spark that... I feel like characterizes myself, but also become more effective in everything that I do. And it's one of those things, like Benji said, it's straight. Like it's, it's like, it talks to you straight and it talks about practices in life. It's by um, Stephen Covey. Nice. Was Dot streaming on Twitch or something? <laughs> Where's he gone? Where oh, he yeah, they, I don't know where he went. I just peeped out. Oh. I was like, dang, let's just say he's streaming. You look like he was gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I think his, his, his stuff probably died. It's all, oh, yeah, for real. It's true. It's true. Amika, just to let you know, I've got two more questions in, in case you're trying to rush. Um, okay, cool, cool. So, um, obviously, Spillage Village has been a collaborative space from the jump. You know, you've you've been collaborating on projects for, for years now, putting different creatives in a room and tapping into so many different ideas and people from different backgrounds. Um, then there was a massive success of the Revenge of the Dreamers compilation. What would you say are the differences in how the two were made and, you know, in terms of what different people and names were brought on to contribute to the canvas? I feel like we with the Spillage Village project, it was a little more in-house and a little more like a, kind of like a, a home cooked meal. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, you, you you know, you go to people's cribs and like, before you eat, like y'all sit down, like the food's still being prepared. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, y'all sit down, y'all have some tea, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Have a drink and you roll up a smoke or whatever while the food's still being prepared. And like, by the time the food is there, like, you you kind of get a chance to know these people a little more. So I feel like that was the process and the delivery for the music. You know, like we actually spent time together in the house. It wasn't just six days where, I, you know, I said all your friends came and then bounced. It was actually, you know, months where we got downtime. We got to see each other at the height of our emotions. And then, you know what I'm saying? We got to find our own spaces and let people deal with what they was dealing with in these spaces. So I feel like the, the project is a little more cohesive in that aspect. Right. But you did tap into, you know, some external names like Aunt Clemens, Masego. Oh yeah, that was that was the 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 the, the beauty of quarantine. Everybody was at home. They had to answer their phone, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> well, I know you ain't doing nothing, but hit me back, bro. I know you ain't doing nothing. Don't hit me back, you know what I'm saying? And like that creativity and like just waiting to see like, oh, let me see what they gonna send back. Let me see what they gonna send back. You know that 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 excitement of sending somebody your idea but letting them sit with it and then bring something back in their own way. It's really dope. Did you have to turn away any contributions? Um, yeah. no, I wouldn't say turn away. We just kept it in the vault, you know what I'm saying, for stuff coming in the future, you know? I mean, we had an intro for the album that my mom did. My mom put a, uh, she did an intro, oh, but yeah. we decided to actually go a, a different way, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, Mondo, next wow. time, Mondo, maybe make the cut next time. Wow. <laughs> right? Come back, come back and see us. Nah, just like. <laughs> Why did you decide to go that way? I know you guys have done that in previous projects. You know, you've always had these interludes and making sure that Atlanta is at the heart of what you put out. It's such a creative community. Was you know, why did you decide to go in that direction then? Because he did an amazing job with the in, in, um, in, intro. We're talking about Big Rube, yeah, right? Shout, shout out to Big Rube. Shout out to Big Rube. Shout out to Dungeon Family. Um, I think I know that Dungeon Family has had a, a huge impact on all of our lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, even the people who are not from Atlanta, like Benji and Marie, because, you know, they came to Atlanta and they just was a part of the thing. Like, we met them in Atlanta, you know, and to be able to have them you know what I'm saying? Co-sign the idea, ideology and co-sign the movement of what we're doing and like kind of get that torch passed means a lot. And we was home. You know, it's been a minute since we were actually home because we toured so much. And then, you know, I, I asked uh, Big Boy for Big Rube's number and he sent the number and we was able to make it happen like that. And we just appreciate them. You know, just like I said, Taste of Village, like it's cool to see people get back without really like looking for no clout or like trying to do it just to seem cool and stuff. 
Yeah. The thing that I loved about that intro the most is that you have like in the background some 808s bumping and that is just like yeah. the true mm -hmm. Atlanta experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, outside yes. the church parking lot. Shout out to my boy Christo. He right here. He he gaming it up. You know, so my boy, <laughs> wow. Look at that. Well, yeah, he you know, just, yeah, he's playing FIFA, you know. FIFA. But yeah, the true, the true Atlanta way is, you know, in the parking lot, we're going to, sometimes you got church in the parking lot, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you, you really get a lot of knowledge and people put you on a lot of wisdom in the parking lot, you know what I'm saying? Listening to music, drinking, smoking. So we definitely want to put that on there. Everything happens in the parking lot in Atlanta. Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Any like you, you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know we started with a with a proverb, so we're gonna end it with one, right? And I, I want a dot here for this because I feel like he needs to contribute to this one. And you even, <laughs> yeah, you even mentioned Olu um, something about a meal, so it actually ties into this, right? So there's a British American saying that says, "Too many cooks spoil the soup." Well, we say broth in the UK. You've heard of that, right? Yep, yeah, yeah. Too many yeah. cooks mm. in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. And although you guys have a long list of contributors, as well as the external artists that I mentioned, they definitely didn't spoil anything with you, there being so many cooks. And I think that's because you're not just the cooks, you're also the ingredients, right? So you're actually mm. filling mm. the pot. You like that. <laughs> so, that, was, that was tight. Thanks. So let's have some fun, right? If there was to be a spillage sandwich, what would be in it? <laughs> What would be in it and who would be what ingredient? Let's start with Olu. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Forget the bread. Obviously, that's a, that's a given. All right, you're right. You were, you were buck. You were a hunter. I know, man. Getting in the end. You know what I'm saying? The Albert Omega, he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? You got to have it. You got to do it. The Albert Omega. You know what I'm saying? Wait, what was the answer? I say I'll, I'll be the bread. The oh, bread. no, the bread's already there. The bread's already, oh, there. already there. The bread. The bread. Folks be having sandwiches without bread. We got to start with the bread. It's not a sandwich if you don't that's have bread. Not a, exactly. No, that's the hey, best. Hey, tell, that, tell that to them people who be like, I want the uh, I want the burger with no bread, please. I have the burger with no bread. Tell them. You want a patty. So you right. So I right. we, we, let's say the bread already though. I say, um, <laughs> I'll be the avocado. No, that was mine. No, no, no. 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 See, see, you try to take my bread away. You got to take your avocado. Gotta take your avocado. avocado. You should let no, me be the bread. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the lettuce, but it got to be the green, green lettuce, not the iceberg. <laughs> yeah, the iceberg. Can't, have, can't have iceberg. <laughs> no. I can't, no, can't do the iceberg. No. Yeah. Romaine, spinach, arugula, any of those. Where you at, bitch? Ah, oh, jeez. I look. I'm probably gonna be like, depending on the sandwich, I'll be like the pesto sauce, or we gotta take my glasses off for that. One. I like that. <laughs> bougie. I, like you know, I'm, I'm trying to like he bougie, y'all. <laughs> Pesto sauce. Yeah, I'm I'm the I'm the pesto sauce. Like I'm you know, you don't need me, but like when you add the pesto sauce, it's like, oh, you know what I mean? Like that's that's <laughs> oh I, why didn't I have this earlier? That's why crazy. didn't I have this earlier? That's why, it. Why didn't we add this earlier? Like what was it? Yeah, homemade that's pesto or bottled pesto? There's a oh, homemade. Homemade. Okay. <laughs> Gotta be. <laughs> I knew this was gonna be vegetarian. Um what would Dot be then if if you guys was to choose on his behalf. Ribeye. What do you think he adds to He could be the meat, yeah. I was about to say, I was going to say the tomato. He hates tomatoes, but I was going to be like, he the tomato. Because <laughs> 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 you, you're going to notice that tomato eats. I'm about, <laughs> you, you know, right, right when that tomato hit that pal, you're, oh, right. that's a tomato. Yep. Oh, you're like, that's a tomato. <laughs> that's him. That's him. <laughs> I see no Southern influence in this sandwich. That was a surprise to me. <laughs> nah, man, it's yeah. been so long since I done had like a fried chicken sandwich. Shout out to Popeyes, but like I just have not had that in so long. I don't even know where to go. But like, we 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 got more ingredients though, so, so maybe Jibs and fried chicken. You know, but yeah, yeah, he probably yeah. Might, yeah. he might be the pool. He might be the pool real, the pool yeah. barbecue real. You know what I'm yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it's a spillage sandwich, so it 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 needs a lot of things to spill over. So, yeah, yeah, I see what you did there. 
Exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's, le there's less of you in the Zoom call. So, you know, we we've left some room for, for other ingredients. So I guess we'll figure out the rest of it. And then you could add this, this sandwich as part of your merch. Oh, yeah. Please, you got to get that merch. You got to be steezed out all winter. We got hoodies, shirts, pants, masks. Um, what else? We got prayer candles. You know what I'm saying? So ah. make sure y'all grab that, get decked out, and stun on your friends. And then show your friends where to get it to. I like and the then candles. go get you a uh, avocado, lettuce, and pesto sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say an essential oil, too. That would be good. Uh, we okay. We gonna that's, next, that's coming next. That's we need to work. It's very it. holistic. This album is super holistic. Yeah, that's coming next. Yes. Okay, well, guys, listen, it's been so much fun, and thank you so much for for kicking it with me today in the trap. It's been such a pleasure. I hope you guys are well during this pandemic. I hope that you you can perform this album very soon here in the UK. So yeah, man, you guys, yeah, Please. peace, peace, <laughs> peace. Thank, thank you, Sarah. You.